When we need to make a selection based on the color of objects in an image, we can sit back and let Photoshop do all the hard work. Let's open a file. We'll go to our Chapter 4 folder and this time open the color range image. I'm going to press the F key to take us into full screen mode with menu bar. I'm going to invoke the hand tool by pressing and holding the space bar while dragging this over to the left to make room for our dialog box. And we're going to go up to the select menu and choose color range. Now what we want to do in this image is select these tulips, but we don't want to select the stems. We just want to select these red tulip heads. In the color range dialog box, we have three eyedroppers. This first eyedropper is what we're going to use to actually make our color selection. So with this eyedropper selected, we simply move over the image and I'm going to click on a color area that I'm looking to isolate. Now, in the preview window of the color range dialog box, you can see some of the image has turned to white. The areas that are white are the areas that have been selected. So we've started to select some of these tulips, but we need to make our selection broader. To do that, we're going to click on this second icon, the eyedropper with the plus sign. This is our add eyedropper, and what I'm going to do is click on a color that has not been included in our selection. There we go. You can see that much more of the tulips are now white. There's a few more spots here that I'm going to go in and clean up. Get this down here. That's looking pretty good. Maybe one more click there. That looks great. Now you can see in our preview that all of those tulips have been selected. There is a fuzziness slider at the top of the color range dialog box that you can use to expand or contract your selection. If you drag it to the left, it will contract your selection making it more precise. If you drag it to the right, it will expand it and include more colors. Right now I think we're pretty good at 78, so I'm just going to press the return key to invoke the OK button. And now we have a selection of these tulips. You can imagine how long it would have taken if we had to either drag these with the polygon tool or even draw with the quick selection tool. Not as fast as just going to the color range tool. What can we do with this selection? Well, last time we did a levels adjustment. Now let's do a hue saturation move. I'm going to go up to Image, Adjustments, and choose Hue Saturation. Now, we can move the hue slider and it will affect only the areas of the image that have been selected. So if I drag it to the left, for example, you can watch the tulips and they change in color. If I drag it to the right, they also change in the color, get a little bit warmer. Now with these marching ants around our selections, it can be a little difficult to see exactly what's going on. So we're going to go up to the view menu and under extras, we're simply going to click it to turn off those selection borders. We're not deleting them, we're just turning them off so that we can have a better visual sense of what we're changing. So let's try that hue slider again. As I drag it to the left, you can see we're changing the color, going more towards the purple. Back to the right, we're getting a little more orange. So it's pretty amazing. Just with one trip to the color range dialog box, we now have a fairly fine-tuned selection of the image. I'm going to press the return key to hit OK. Now, I'll go back up to the view menu so we can turn back on our edges. So we can see our selection. Now this only took a few seconds to make this selection, but there are times when you're going to really be laboring over an image for a considerable amount of time, and if I saved and closed this image, that selection is gone forever. But I'm going to show you how to save a selection. With this selection active, we're going to go over to our Channels tab. And at the bottom of the Channels tab, we're going to click on this second icon that is our Load Selection as Channel button. Once we do that, we've now created an alpha channel. An alpha channel is just a fancy word for a selection that's contained in the channels panel. With the alpha channel added, we can save and close this file and open it back up three years from now and very quickly get back to this exact selection. Let's see how that works. I'm going to deselect this selection right now with Command D on the Mac, Control D on the PC. Our selection is now gone and seemingly lost forever. But if we go back to our channels palette, select the alpha channel by clicking it so it is highlighted in blue. And this first icon at the bottom, the load channel as selection button, we're going to press that. Now we're going to click back on our RGB channel. And voila, we have our original selection. How do we know it's the original selection? Well, let's try it out. Let's make another adjustment to the image. 
we'll go up to image adjustments and this time we'll do levels so we have a selection of all of our tulips and if I drag to the left I can brighten them while leaving the rest of the image untouched so if you need to select something based on color the color range tool is a great place to start and we can save selections this selection is saved as an alpha channel it'll stay with our image unless we manually throw it away